Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Welcome, episode number 88 of Get Paid for Your Pad. And today I'm here with Sandy. Sandy, how's it going? I'm good, I'm good. Hello. Where are you right now, Sandy? I'm in London now. I'm going to be here for like two weeks. I'm traveling. I'm visiting friends and going to events. So, you know. That's awesome. And of course, you are traveling because Airbnb has made that possible. Um, so, so, so Sandy's been following the, the podcast and he's a, a fan of the Get Paid for Your Pet community for a while. So we've, uh, we've talked a lot and uh, so I'm really excited to, to finally have him on the show and, and share his story with everybody. So Sandy, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from and, and how did you get involved with Airbnb? Well, basically, I'm, I'm, I live in Spain. Like, I'm, I'm actually in French. I've been living in Spain for the past 10 years now. Uh, I moved there to learn Spanish at the beginning, then I ended up staying here for my work. Um, and the last year, you know, I was starting a new business and I was looking at Airbnb and all the things. And I invested in my own apartment. So I decided to give it a try. I rented it on Airbnb. I was a bit skeptical at the beginning. I didn't know if it was going to be okay. So I, the funny thing, I was like kind of traveling around Madrid, where I'm based. But everything went great. So I'm I'm using my own flat when I travel. So basically, when I um, you know, like the like what I get I earn from my Airbnb, it pays my traveling. Basically, it's like you know, it come to zero at the end. But then afterward, all I had so much success. Then other people asked me, oh, can you help me with my Airbnb? And I was like, okay, sure, no problem. So I'm, I started to. Now I'm managing like three other apartments. Mm-hmm. When I, I take a small commission to to manage the flat because they don't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like it's uh, people who who are not very good at internet. I call it in English like internet savvy, you know. Internet savvy, really yeah. Know, like they don't like I would tell you my mother or their friends. They're like, oh, it's great that you're making money on Airbnb, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they don't know how to put the ad. They don't know. Mm-hmm. No, they can pull it, but you know, you have a, for example, I remember an example of my, uh, someone telling me, yeah, but can these people call me before? I want to know them. Mm-hmm. No, no, I mean, mm-hmm. it's Airbnb. <laughs> it doesn't work this way. So I had to explain everything. So basically, as you know, Airbnb takes a lot of time. You have to reply to guests. You have to be there if you have any questions. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's not a full-time job. You have to take care of them. You know, you have to be, Invaluable. Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, you know, it's a big responsibility yeah, to be to be an Airbnb host, especially because you know the the guests that you receive in your house are often on holiday, and you know imagine you're mm-hmm. you're working hard fifty weeks a year to uh, you know to have that uh, two week trip. So you, you know you always want your holiday to be perfect, and and that's why we as an Airbnb host we have a big responsibility, of course. But um, let's track back a little bit. So you're living yeah. in Madrid and you're, you're renting an apartment, right? That's right. No, no, no. I own my place in Madrid. Okay. So you, you, own, yeah. you own an apartment in Madrid and, um, yeah. and you, you hear of Airbnb and you're thinking, hey, let's, let's give it this a try. Now, did you have a full-time job at the time? No, I'm working as a freelance man. I'm doing my, I'm working on my own projects. And on actually, yeah, I will tell you the story. Like I used to work as an SEO consultant. And um, what happened? Like you know, I was doing, I, I was like a bit tired of doing this job. So I didn't like it anymore. Yeah. You know the feeling. You wake up one day and and I don't want to do this anymore. I want to work on my own SEO projects. 
So basically, I was like, how can I make money right now? And I found out Airbnb, it's one of the almost the unique semi passive income. Then, you know, the, all the things on, on the internet, like telling you you can make millions in five minutes, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm -hmm. But really, Airbnb, you went to a place, mm -hmm. after like a week, mm -hmm. you can make a living from it. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So, what happened? I went in my place, and uh, mm -hmm. then now I'm working on different projects on my own. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, it's great. It's okay. happy. It's, it's, in a way, it's, it's helping me develop different projects, you know. Right, because the, the money that you make of your apartment allows you to spend, you know, spend more time um, working on, on new projects that don't necessarily make an income yet. That's right, that's right. But the, 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 the truth is in my, in my apartment, I'm not making like, you know, a thousand on, on, my, on my place. So I'm just making enough to pay like, you know, when I travel. Like all the apartments, but then I'm also working on mm -hmm. on other things, which I, I do make money, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But not that, not as much. Mm -hmm. And but really by mistake, I, I wasn't really looking for it. <coughs> I apologize. Like I get nervous with my voice, you know, when I talk on my on the interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So I, I can just have a. That's okay. Don't worry about big, it. Big breathing, so it's okay. I get excited. I like it so much. <laughs> the Airbnb and my projects, anyway. So what happened? Like um, people try to ask me, I mean, start to ask me to help them with their place because they didn't want to do it themselves. Yeah. You know, they were like, yeah, but I want to run my place, but I don't know to reply to people. I don't know to to work on this. And how many so people are you helping right now? Now I'm helping two, but almost like three very soon. I'm gonna help another person, but like now I'm like, I'm, I'm managing um, uh, three apartments. Okay. One of my own, which I don't rent all the time, like when I'm traveling, so it's a uh, fifty-fifty. And the other one, like the other two, sorry, it's from uh, relatives. Like uh, actually, to be honest, friend of my mother who was like, you know, oh my God, you're doing so great on Airbnb. Can you help us? So I said, okay, no problem. I, I take fifteen uh, <laughs> percent, you know, and they were like, great, because to be honest, I'm renting um, like now I'm renting a flat in, it's, it's in a, on an island in Samba. I don't know if you know it. Like it's an island in the Caribbean. Yeah. And so I've got two flats there, uh, two apartments. No, now I'm using flats. I'm in the UK. <laughs> two apartments, and. Um, and I make them like almost five thousand last month for each, and I was taking you know fifteen percent, and they were like, "Oh my God, Sunny, it's great!" Like you know, they, basically they made like four thousand euros. Right. So they're so happy, they, and, they were, they were, and you're they and you're still happy. you're still making uh, like seventy five seven hundred and fifty, like fifteen percent of of five thousand. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah. but, but my question for you really is, how do you, how do you manage these apartments? Because the, these are in, in the Caribbean and you're in London right now. So what do you actually do for that 15%? Is it, is it the messaging on the Airbnb platform or do you, do you arrange the, the cleanings? Do you do all the communication? Do you maintain the listings, etc.? Or No, actually, I, I, I've been looking like doing some research online. Like I saw some agencies taking like 30% which include everything, and I figure like I take half because I don't do the cleaning, I don't offer like the cleaning services or this stuff, they have to deal with it, deal with it themselves, but they gave me the contact, like in the Caribbean, I've got a number of someone who will clean, so I talk to her all the time, look, can you go tomorrow, can you go like in three days, and I pay her something every time she goes, so we set like a rate, you know, Mm -hmm. A rate like every time you go, mm -hmm. I pay you that much, which includes um, the check-in, check-out, and cleaning the place. Okay, you know. right. So you have somebody on the ground that you on the ground. that you communicate with. <coughs> and whenever you have yeah. guests, you tell that person, okay, you know the guests are coming at this time, so can you go to clean and then check them in? That's right. That's and how right. did you, how did you find those people? Because 
I can imagine yeah, that, I think, it must be difficult to find somebody if you're not if you're not there yourself. That, that's the good part because actually I asked the people I was helping over there to do you have someone you can trust who can open the door for you and do everything for you and I will manage it myself. You know, so basically they had a uh, trust, a uh, cleaning, someone who can go and clean the place and do everything, who they trust. Say, look, I will talk to you every time there is a guest. So at the same time, it's someone you trust who will open the door and, it, uh, and I manage everything. So it was perfect. You know, it's, it's a win-win. That's great. And so does, does it always work no. out or do you sometimes have communication problems? You know, it's different time zones and... Like, have, have there been any issues or is it, has it been smooth sailing so far? It has been smooth. Maybe a little bit, like, not a problem, but like, you know, since like, with the time change and everything, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I would tell in advance the, the person in the Caribbean, someone is coming in two days, I would get them the phone number, the contact, mm -hmm. and I would tell my guest, I'm, I'm not in the Caribbean now, mm -hmm. but you can contact this person in case of any emergency. You know, so they will deal with her directly. If right. something, if it's not urgent, they send me like a message on Airbnb and I deal with it. But if now, look, we have a big problem or anything happened, they can call her, you know, so it's no, no problem. You know, it's, uh. Right. Okay. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. So. Basically, what you do is you just do the communication on the Airbnb platform. You and then yeah. as soon as you have a booking, you kind of, you know, you you give the the guest some information and you give the phone number of the check-in person, and then you know that's that's kind of all you need to do. Yeah, and also what I offer when I went to see these two other person in the cabin, which I know, it's I tell them look if you go through me, you will earn more because I have a good ranking. I can put your place on the top. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my, in a way, I'm doing my own SEO, being an SEO guy mm -hmm. on my Airbnb because of the, of the, the text, the, the ad, like everything on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I work on my, on the profile, you know, on the, the, the ads. And uh, mm -hmm. so they get more bookings. So it's, uh, you know, so, so they so get all the group. You know, so it's a win win situation. You take 15%. But you're probably because you because you know how to create the listing well, you know how to how to do it. So you're probably pulling in more bookings than they would, right? So they're basically yeah. you're saying that's they're probably making that fifteen percent back. No, it's, that's correct because I really like um, promote the the like apartment, you know, on the on the platform mm -hmm. in right. a better way so they get more booking. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Um, do you have plans to expand this? Because well, because basically you're you're almost running a, a small short uh, short stay management company with you know three or four people. Because um, you know there's a lot of short stay management companies popping up uh, popping up everywhere, and it's it's starting to annoy me a little bit because you know I I always get these messages. Uh, I. I get excited when when I get a message on my in my Airbnb app where I get a uh, an inquiry, uh, and then it turns out it's it's somebody from a short stay management company who's just trying to convince me to you know give them my my listing and and uh, and give them twenty five percent for managing it, which is which I'm not looking to do, and they've uh, they started to even become a, a little bit more smart about how they contact uh, Airbnb hosts. Because I got this message the other day, and this guy writes me, "Hey, uh, I work for the short stay co management company, and I have uh, I have somebody that I cannot accommodate. So I was wondering if you could accommodate this person." Yeah. You know? So immediately I, I was thinking, "Oh, that's great. You know, if these short stay companies are passing clients to me, then that's great." So so I told him, "Yeah, I, you know, I have the availability, so no problem." And then he sends me another message, like a few hours later. Oh, sorry, um, our client uh, chose a different apartment. And then he goes into his sales pitch, like, by the way, do you want to put your listing on uh, on our website and we manage it and everything? And will you pay us twenty five percent? So then I was thinking, ah, now I know what's going on, because if they if they pitch me directly, I was just reported to uh, to Airbnb because 
you know, I, I don't think they should be using the platform for that. It's, 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 it's annoying. And, uh, yeah. and so they're using a, a, a little bit of a different approach. But do you, uh, are you planning to, to expand your business at all and, and become a, yeah. a short stay management company? Well, 50-50, like, I mean, in between, like, I'm not looking to have, like, you know, front of the apartments, because I, my main idea is to focus on my other business. But uh, I, 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 what I do is, like, I do it to friends, friends of friends, you know, and I also if someone comes, I'm not like these companies, like, it's more personalized approach, you know, so they trust me more, like, you know, these people I know, they could even, they could even approach by these companies. They wanted to take them to take like 30%, you know, yeah. or they came to me because I was, you know, offering 15 and also because they know me, yeah. you know, yeah. and it was more trustworthy. And because this company, they were asking for more and they were like even asking for like extras. So it was, it was even more expensive at the end. Right. So I'm taking more personal approach. But the only problem is like it's taking more time because I'm, I'm not doing any advertising to move to get to find more people. You see, it's more word of mouth. It's like, look, he's doing this, and they come to me. You know, and uh, but I'm I'm looking to expand. I like to get maybe my goal would be to have maybe five six apartments, which would be great. And uh, but. As you know, if I end up having 10, 15, I won't be able to do it myself. You yeah, know? You need, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why you need to start hiring people. And uh, yeah. I don't know, I, th I think there's a saying, I think there's a saying about, you know, running your own company is pretty fun until you hire the first person. Mm. Because then it becomes like, you know, you have to manage another person and you're always going to feel like that other person is not doing the job as well as you could do it yourself. and. And then uh, that's where a lot of the stress uh, comes in, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm managing my other companies when I have people working with me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. But I, I really enjoy doing the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. it's, I find it easy and, you know, for me, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But to, it's, it's fun. I mean, people are very... Mm -hmm. I, I was very surprised and, like, all the guests I've got were all very nice. Like, I had no problem. Mm -hmm. They were all super, like, you know, super nice. Yeah. No, never, I uh, never had any problem. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing. So it's, it's good. Uh, what else? I don't know. Well, so, so what, um, what would you say? Cause you've been doing this for a while now, right? Yeah. For like almost a year. Almost not, a year. That, yeah? Not that long. Not that long. But that's the thing about Airbnb. It went so fast. Mm -hmm. That's what really surprised me. As you know, you do, you start any startup. It takes like maybe six months a year, so we can we can make profit. Like I had different companies in the past, only takes some time. It's normal. Mm -hmm. But Airbnb, mm -hmm. that's the only business I've been working on. And after like a few weeks a month, it's already working. Yeah, you know what I mean. I know, and yeah, yeah, I know, uh, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> I was even I, I wasn't even prepared for it. You know, I was like, I'm going to try it, and after like a month, oh my god, my place is booked for the next two months. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? You know, it was it was crazy. Yeah, so that's awesome. No, I mean, I you know, I think um, I think that's why Airbnb is a uh, is also a great platform to use for people who you know who are transitioning from a nine to five job to starting their own business, and I. I know a lot of people who are in that transition. So you're, you know, you've quit your job, you're not getting your regular salary anymore. And you're working on a business that's not providing you the income yet, right? Like you said, when you start your own business, it always takes, you know, I'd say like six to 24 months to build up a, like a significant income stream that you can live off. Um, and so, you know, that initial like six to 12 months where you're not really making much, it's uh, it's really an uh, an ideal tool to uh, you know to help you sort of support yourself, and it gives you the flexibility to travel, of course, which which is something that uh, I took advantage of. Like I'm in the Philippines right now, actually. But um, but yeah, you seem to have adopted a similar lifestyle. Uh, you say you've been traveling for for nine months. Do you, do you actually stay at Airbnbs as well when you travel? Yeah, I'm the best Airbnb customer because basically I, I rent my place and I rent places in Airbnb all the time. 
Okay. Great. So what I do you, like it also. What do you think of uh, what do you think of the hosts that you've stayed with so far? Uh, no problem. If, even we end up like uh, talking, like giving each other advice, like I tell them that I have a place. No. On I sometimes I even help them. You should do this and that, and you know, in a good, in a good way. So everything is like it's great. You know, uh, you know, it's no. I I also have a, a great experience, but I also like you know I was reading your book. And when, now when I travel, I stay in a place for maybe like a month or sometimes even longer mm-hmm. and I can get like a, a better rate. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm making more money on my Airbnb mm-hmm. because if I rent my place, I don't know, uh, 60 a day, 60 euros a day, depends. Mm-hmm. And I, I go rent a place in, I don't know, I've been to Barcelona for like uh, three weeks mm-hmm. and I tend to negotiate the rate like, look, I'm going to be staying for like a month. Can you do it at 40 or 45? I don't know. It works all the time. Okay. So it's not a big, I'm not making that much, but in some time, mm-hmm. even I remember I went to Tenerife for like a month. I ended up paying 500 for the month. It was like, you know, mm-hmm. very cheap mm-hmm. and uh, a, good, a good flat. And, um, and I was making three times more with my flat in Madrid. It, it was great. Yeah. I know that's mm. that's uh, that's great, but you're saying you rent out your your place for sixty euros. That's that sounds like a really good price to me, because you're in. Yeah. Are you in the center of Madrid? I'm in the center of Madrid, like next to I don't know if you know Madrid, but like in the white center, like next to Puerta del Sol, mm. not like in the very center of the city. Mm. So it's a very good spot to to rent, you know. And what for, what type of unit do you have? Do you have an apartment or do you have a, a studio or? It I have um, I have a studio apartment. It's like basically I have one room. Mm-hmm. And if I would have to do it all over again, I would maybe take a flat with two rooms, which right. I would be able to rent it more or with more. It would be more expensive. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, you have yeah. a you have a studio, with a kitchen, a bathroom. Yeah. How many okay. square meters is it? 40, 40 meters. 40 square really meters. Good. But it's still Size, like, like it's, it's, I mean, the center of Madrid. I mean, Madrid is a major European capital. And, yeah. you know, if, if you're a couple, and so you're only paying like 30 euros each. That sounds mm-hmm. that sounds like a pretty good deal to me for for that location. Like, what about the hotel prices in Madrid? Are they, are they much higher or are they, are they also quite affordable? No, they about the same price, but you get, like, as you know, on Airbnb, you get more for the same price. Mm-hmm. So people will choose, look, I can rent uh, my own flat at 60 euros, or I can go to an hotel, have less services, and pay even more sometimes. They cost a little bit more. Right. And, you know. What are the what are the laws like in Madrid? Is it, uh, is it what, what's the, the legal situation in Madrid? Are you allowed to, to do this, or is it kind of a gray zone? It's a bit gray, but like in between. For example, me, I don't rent it all the time because I, it's my own property. Mm-hmm. So I was renting it when I was traveling, but like, um, I, I had some, actually I have some friends who work in a real estate agency. Mm-hmm. And they were like, it's, I, I asked them about the laws and told me it's no problem. Mm-hmm. As long as you don't make as much as, I don't know, like 5,000 a year with your Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Which I went a little bit up, so I was like, oh, maybe I'm now I'm, I'm gonna pay my taxes because <laughs> I reached the, you know what I mean, like I reached the limit, mm-hmm. and because I was traveling, it was okay, mm-hmm. and but now I'm I'm doing everything legal, but but now I want to go back back to Madrid for a few months, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're gonna be staying at your own place in Madrid, yeah. Because I want, I want to because I have, I have to work my project with a with a partner. I will have to be in Madrid for like maybe two or three months. Okay. To work on my and then project. after and then yeah. after that, you're planning to uh, to keep traveling or? Yeah, I want to keep traveling. I have to go to Asia and maybe Latin America for like a few months. And you know, I like to go to Thailand, to go to Colombia, you know, different places. Uh, in three months' time, like after the summer, like near near summer, I will stay in Europe, and after I will move to different destinations. But I really like to travel, same as you. 
You know. that's, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, uh, it's good to uh, it's good to finally hear your your, uh, your story. Uh, we've been talking for uh, I think almost a year. So um, yeah. so thanks for uh, for sharing your story. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, I wish you uh, a lot of luck with uh, with all your businesses and um, your the managing of other people's places and your own listing, of course. Thank you. And uh, for all the listeners, thank you for listening. And next week, uh, we'll have another episode of Get Paid for Your Pet. So we'll see you then. Get paid for your pet. Get paid for your pet.